você sabe que até You know that even the devil demands justice. Did you know that? Até a injustiça Even the injustice appeals to justice. Did you know that? Yes or no? Quantas pessoas quantas pessoas fazem How many people practice injustice? Mas querem but demand justice. Yes or no? Isn't it so? So, justice is a feeling. It's a feeling of the human being. Irrational animals don't have that sense of justice. Isn't it true? Do you think a dog has sense of justice? Or your cat, your animals, do you think they have a sense of justice? No, they don't. Only the human being has the sense of justice. And that's what differs men from monkeys. Does a monkey have a sense of justice? No, it doesn't. So how could I have come from the monkey? Where did this sense of justice come from? God is justice. And when the Lord Jesus appeals to repentance, he's talking about leaving aside, abandoning, doing a diet, a rigorous diet of injustice. You who are a fluffy person knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> to do a diet of what is unjust, what is wrong, and to start eating, feeding yourself with what is right. Amen? He says here, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. It's not just a hunger for righteousness, but also thirst. It's all that the human body needs. Food and water. Bread and water. Amen? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. It means we have to have this thirst and this hunger in order for us to be filled. And he says, for they shall be filled. Amen? They shall be filled. You are a person who have been wronged. And when we are wronged, we feel the pain in our flesh. In our bones, nerves, we suffer on the inside and also on the outside. I hate injustice. I had a true hate against injustice. Hate, hate, hate. Why? Not just because injustice represents the devil, but because injustice It hurts our feelings. It abuses our lives. Yes or no? I believe that you might have been wronged already. And you know what I'm talking about. You know very well what I'm talking about. But injustice is something from evil. And if you want to walk with justice, which is God... You have to start taking the first steps. The first steps towards justice. Towards what is correct. What is just. Amen. Is it hard? Yes, it's not easy. You have to sacrifice. If you want something precious. Something very valuable. Which is the eternal salvation of your soul, 
you have got to pay the price and you are going to pay it if you really want it you have got to pay the price it's a sacrifice if you want to encounter him you wish to know Jesus you have to have as a principle if you really want to know him You have to base your life on the principle of justice. Justice. For instance, Jesus is over there. And on the opposite side is evil, the devil. All that is wrong, all that is unjust is there. And all that is just is in Jesus. If I'm here in the middle and I want to encounter Jesus, if I want to encounter Jesus, I have to turn my back on the injustice. I mean, I have to turn my back on lies, robbery, deceit, hypocrisy. I have to turn my back on all that is wrong. And then, I'm going to walk towards what is righteous, just, correct. Amen? What is just? What is correct? And so was the beginning of everything. Before God created all things, He created justice. He is the justice himself. You verify that the whole universe follows laws, fixed laws, established laws. If these laws did not exist, the earth could clash with the moon and the sun overheat the earth. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yeah, but before God created all things, he created laws. Laws that ruled the whole universe. That's God's principle. God's principle is justice. God's principle is justice. If you don't want to walk in righteousness, justice, forget about having an encounter with God. If you say, I, I want to do what my heart commands me to. I want to follow what my heart tells me to do. But then you will never have an encounter with God because He is justice. The kingdom of God is justice. If you want to enter God's kingdom, you have got to live in righteousness, justice. Therefore, it's no use to attend a church. Even if the church is perfect. But if he or she does not obey the rules of the kingdom of God. Yes, he might obey the rules of the church. But if he doesn't obey the rules of the kingdom of God. He won't enter it. He won't know the Lord Jesus. He will remain blind. And his faith will not work as it was supposed to. The person is going to be deluded by his or her own faith. Frustrated in faith. Which is what is going on with majority. Majority of people who compose this world. Even inside churches. That's the reason why so many people say, I don't believe in God. I don't believe God exists. Of course, that person hasn't seen God in anyone's life. Therefore, he doesn't believe in God's existence. But when you have an encounter with Jesus, Jesus begins to walk with you and puts on your shoes, wears your clothes. You give off Jesus' presence wherever you go. Either 
through your eyes, your words, your attitudes. Amen? Because you become a righteous person. A correct one. Amen? You would say now, but that's very difficult. God doesn't ask us anything we cannot do. Because he's not crazy. To demand something from someone that cannot do it. The Lord Jesus says that the weightier matters of the law are justice, mercy, and what else? Faith. Now pay attention. Pay close attention. Because right here are the foundations. The principles of our whole lives. The quality of life that you desire. Justice, mercy and faith. Justice represents God the Father. The Bible says that God is sitting on the throne of justice. His throne is based on justice. And you can realize that everybody wants justice. Yes or no? Who likes injustice? Answer me now. No one. Is it true or not? Everybody hates what? Injustice. But when a person lies, he's also being unjust. Yes or no? When a person steals, that person is also being unjust. But that one hates when he is wronged. Yes or no? So God is justice. And if you want to have an encounter with him, you have to make efforts. You have to do everything possible for you to have a conduct, a behavior of justice. So if you steal, you have to stop stealing. If you lie, you have to stop lying. You're going to live a correct life. If you commit adultery, you're going to stop committing it. That's the reality. Yes or no? Because it's just. All that is wrong is unjust. All that is right is just. God the Father started everything with justice. He is justice. Then the Father created all things, went to his throne, and sent his son Jesus. Jesus is the expression of mercy. He represents mercy. There is no one that is lost that cannot be found when that one has an encounter with the Lord Jesus. However terrible his or her mistakes were. For instance, the two robbers on the cross. The two of them began to say, Lord, you have saved so many. Now why are you there in suffering and dying? Both of them started talking bad about Jesus. But as the time, the hours went by, one of them said, no, this man isn't like me. He isn't like us. Then he turned to Jesus and said, at his last breath, he said, Lord, when you enter your kingdom, remember me. Have mercy on me. 
And at that very moment, Jesus, who is mercy, stretched out his hands to him and said, Today you are going to be with me in my kingdom. At his last breath, Jesus is mercy. The woman who was a prostitute, her profession was prostitution. When she came to Jesus, he attended to her. There wasn't even one person who had come to Jesus that he said, no, no, I will not give you any attention. Oh, listen, you are a sinner. That's why I'm not going to answer you. No, not at all. All of those, 100%, who came to Jesus were answered. Who came to Jesus? Prostitutes, robbers, outlaws, murderers. Anyway, all sort of lost people. And in Jesus, all those people found salvation. Including ten lepers. Which, by the way, Jesus knew that only one of them would come back to him. To thank him and follow him. Even so, he healed the ten of them. The other nine men followed their ways, their lives. And only one came back to Jesus. It means he doesn't measure the efforts to forgive. His forgiveness is unlimited. However, it is necessary the person to manifest faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus. Amen? But where does this faith come from? This faith is the action of the Holy Spirit. Which is what the Lord Jesus says. Justice, mercy, and faith. For instance, have you seen God? Have you seen Jesus? I'm asking you. Have you touched him? No, you haven't. But why are you so sure, so certain of his existence? Faith. Amen? It's faith. That faith is a gift that Holy Spirit gave you. Amen? So while you carry this faith in the Lord Jesus, you are carrying a talent, a gift of the Holy Spirit. He is the one who gives us faith in order for us to achieve mercy, and consequently, to live where? In righteousness or justice. Amen? Did you understand? I ask you, is it possible a marriage to remain without justice? I ask you. Why are there people here who got divorced? Why did you get divorced? Oh, Bishop, my husband was with a lover. He was dividing his love with another woman. Is that fair? Then you got divorced. Who suffers? The husband suffers, the wife, the children. Yes or no? And also his pocket. Because he has to give a pension to the wife. Yes or no? Yes or no? And if he gets married and gets divorced twice, he has to pay two pensions. If he does the third time, it's going to be three women, three pensions. And if he does it the fourth time, it's going to be four women, four pensions. That's why there are so many people working just to pay pension. And all of that because of what? Because of injustice. The injustice he practiced. Now he pays a pension here, another one there, another one over there. He exchanged his woman, no problem. 
But you will have to pay another pension. That's why you, the single ones, before you get married, evaluate well, think well, and find out if the person you are getting married to is the person that is what? The right or the just, the correct person. How can you know that? Bishop, how can I know that? How can I know I'm getting married to a righteous person? How can I know? It's easy to know. You just need to evaluate his or her words. If he says, if he or she says something to you and does not fulfill it, you can realize that he has a bad character. She has a bad character. Come out of that relationship. Because it's going to turn out to be a bad idea. Otherwise, you will have to pay a pension as well. And if you try to get married several times, each time you do, it's going to be one more pension. Justice, mercy, and faith. Which means God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit.